Welcome back to today's final Splash of Pain, where it's time for us to welcome back popular SAA artist Louise Bogard as she shares her top tips for painting a stunning winter tree using just one of the wonderful colours available from the sensational SAA artist watercolour range. Today I'm going to paint a winter tree. I'm going to use SAA's Nordic Blue, it's the most fantastic blue, really do love it and it adds a nice atmosphere to this kind of painting. Now what I'm going to do is put water all over the main part of the tree, the trunk and so on to start with. Get that to move down very quickly. It's not terribly clean, there's some colour in there which is exciting already and a couple of sweeps to suggest the, the foreground and the ground. Right, picking up my sable size 10 and straight into a fairly thick wash of the Nordic blue. And into the wetted area, I'm going to be touching, touch of the, the dry side and into the damp so that the pigment blooms right across, which really gives an interesting effect that it's like the bark without doing a great deal of work. You get some very, very strong colour straight into that tree. And it's sweeping across, creating a most fantastic effect. Look at that gas, gorgeous. And a quick sweep down there for the ground. Another one up there. So we've got it on the floor, which is brilliant. Don't want any levitating trees, that won't do. So a bit more of the lighter pigment now little bit more water into it and I'm going to touch the other side. My light is coming from the left and the darker side is on the right. So go into some of those branches that are coming off, encourage them up. Gone to a rigger now so that I can get some branches coming off the main trunk. A little bit more water and allow the rigger to dance around, suggesting leafless branches. Nearly forgot to speak then. <laughs> Going back into a stronger pigment. Pick up a little bit of strength over this side. And you can see how it's starting to move around and makes it look very much bark-like. As I say, you've hardly done a thing, and this colour is just superb for this sort of a tree. A bit of extra moisture in there. And pulling out some of these beautiful branches at the top. Allow your rigger to dance around, creating smaller branches. There's a very big one there. That's coming off at a lovely angle. Take a bit of the pigment off so that the branches get lighter as they go off and get smaller. If I get some very dark pigment, what I can do is suggest some ivy. Lots of oak trees are covered in ivy, but this is an oak tree, by the way. <laughs> and take this branch up here. Again, let the rigger dance around and do its job. And another one over here. A bit, bit darker pigment, I think, there. Just go a little bit darker at the bottom. And one coming up there. And this branch, I'd like to have a few branches coming off. That needs thickening up a little bit up there. Been on a diet up at the top. Make it a bit more chunky. And that one. Ooh. One missing here. And a final little thing. Always terrific fun. You can do the tiniest, tiniest little bit of flicking where the branches are very, very thin, where you get a few leaves left. And that's my 
winter tree painted with SAA's Nordic Blue. Hope you've enjoyed it. See you soon. Lovely Lou's style there. Thanks, Louise. Nordic Blue is just one of the 39 fantastic colours available from the stunning SAA Artist Watercolour range, which combine the finest pigments with the highest quality production standards and represent fantastic value for money. To see the full range, visit saa.co.uk. Right, before we wrap up today's programme, we've just got time to dip into the Splashy Paint post bag to answer another one of your artistic questions. Mark Holton has emailed in to ask, I was trying to paint a beach scene the other day, but my yellow for the sand was just really bright and far too vibrant. Do you have any pointers? Well, I can show you this. This is a painting what I did a couple of years ago of a place called Trevone in Cornwall. And you can see the natural sand colour. Now, sand colour really varies from place to place, time of day, but this sort of ochre-based colour works extremely well. If I show you how to mix the colour, starting off with yellow ochre, which is a good base, put a little squirt of that just there. Now, yellow ochre by itself, which is probably what you was using, is way too bright. People tend to think it's a good colour for the sand, but you can see it's just too yellow. If you simply add a little tiny bit of alizarin crimson, and then a little tiny bit of a blue, now you could use natural blue or you could use an ultramarine blue, and you'll see the difference in the colour. It kind of kills some of the yellow and makes a much, much more usable sand colour. You can also buy a colour which I've designed myself called natural yellow, which is basically that mixture, and it's an ideal pre-mixed sand colour. It's got a little bit of opaqueness about it, which works really well, but you can see if you water it down, it's a very nice sand stone colour. It's also great for doing buildings. And hopefully that answers your question. Well, that's all we've got time for today, folks. But remember, for more inspirational advice to support you on your artistic journey, visit saa.co.uk or email us at splashofpaint at saa.co.uk. And we'll do our very best to help. In the meantime, join us next week when popular SAA artist Vic Beercraft will be showing us why he's the cat's whiskers when it comes to pastels. Louise Bogard makes a point with sword liners. Spellbinding professional artist Sharon Hurst conjures up another magical painting project. Marion Dutton demonstrates how to give your floral paintings a sparkling finishing touch. So tune in next time for another colourful edition of A Splash of Paint. Whether you're a beginner, improver or professional, discover more about the full range of SAA membership benefits available to bring a bigger splash of paint into your life. Visit www.saa.co.uk for details.